Do you know if LeBron and AD are going to play in the first preseason game on Friday? Uh, we haven't made that decision yet. I would say it's uh, probably unlikely that they will play. All right, over to Kyle. Kyle. Hey, great. New mechanic. Um, Frank, uh, sort of related to that, um, have Quinn and Alfonso joined your group and um, – you know, how, how how many of your guys do you think you'll have available to play in the first preseason game? Uh, that's tough to say where we're going to be at on Friday. Uh, but we've had the same group uh, today that we had uh, for the first two days of practice. And, um, you know, we'll have to see where everything's at on Friday in terms of uh, knowing how many players we're going to have. Dan Wakey, please. Hey, Frank, um, you mentioned sort of the importance of off-season pickup games a couple times. And, right. and obviously, a lot of your guys haven't had many um, for a lot of reasons. Does that make you want to do more live work um, here in, in training camp than maybe normally would? Or like, how do you try to try to crack that problem? Or is that just kind of is what it is? No, it makes me want to do less live work, actually, uh, just out of uh, concern for um, – you know, making sure that our our, our players are not put in uh, you know a situation where they could be vulnerable to injury. You know, if your body's not used to playing live basketball uh, like you typically would be uh, building up to a normal a normal training camp, I think you have to take it slower, uh, do more drill work, try to put your system in uh, through drill work uh, as much as possible, and then you know introduce the live action uh, sort of at a slower pace. Uh, to get their bodies used to uh, contact again. Have you had those guys? How, how much actual, like, sort of live basketball have you guys done so far? Well, we haven't gone long in, in length of practice because of uh, in being, a sh being short on bodies, uh, you know, both with practice bodies and, and, and certain guys being out. Um, so the, the duration of practice hasn't really been uh, nearly as long as it typically would be in a training camp. And what I try to do the first three days is have a – you know, sort of a buildup where the first practice would be 25% uh, live work, 75% drill work. Second practice, 50-50. Uh, today, about 75% live work, 25% uh, drill work. And just try to build it up each of the three days with an off day tomorrow. And um, like I said, you know, the, the practices have, have not really gone uh, longer than an hour, hour 15 minutes, which is uh, far shorter than they typically would be in a training camp. Okay, let's go to Dave McMenamin. Frank, you guys brought in um, Montrez and Mark and, and said goodbye to Dwight and JaVale. And, uh, you know, while they both play centers, they, they play center in a different way, obviously. Um, but do you think they can still provide the same regular season type of role that those guys did last year in terms of um, limiting the amount of minutes that Anthony would, would play at that position during the regular season? Uh, for sure. Uh, they can play at least the roles that, that JaVale and, and Dwight did from a minute standpoint, uh, maybe more. You know, I think that's something that will just play out over the course of the season. Um, but we still would like to have a blend of, of AD uh, playing at the four uh, and as well as playing at the five, which is – Obviously, something uh, our ability to shift back and forth uh, in the playoffs last year was pivotal and, and, and important to us winning the championship, and um, you know something that we'll uh, we'll balance again uh, this season. Thank you, Trudell, please. Hey, Frank, I wanted to ask you a, a more of a big picture question about LeBron and AD, just in light of the extensions. How did your relationship developed and evolved from when you took over? Um, to winning the championship, and if you could just uh, touch on that, how important it for you? Since winning the championship, or since I began? But from when you from when you took the job through, you know, winning the championship and today. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I really didn't know either one of them except having uh, having met them. You know, I had met Anthony once or twice. Uh, I had known LeBron from obviously competing in the in the playoffs, coaching him in the All Star game. Uh, so there was a little bit of relationship there, but really not much on either end. And, 
you know, I think, uh, you know, we hit the ground running uh, with being on the same page with our plan and our, uh, the culture that we wanted to set and uh, earned a lot of trust uh, between each other uh, throughout the course of the season. And obviously, you know, when you accomplish something like we did in, in terms of winning a championship, you know, I think that, uh, that strengthens any relationship and, you know, puts us in a, in a space where, you know, no one will ever take that away from us. You know, we won a championship together and I think there's a bond that's, that's created there uh, that lasts forever, uh, whichever directions, you know, we, we, we go uh, going forward. I would say the same thing with, uh, you know, the players that were on last year's team and are not here now. Um, but a strong bond is definitely uh, created. And, um, you know, since, since then, you know, we, you know, I like to give our guys space in the off season. And, um, but it's been, it's, it's been fun since we got back in the building and uh, started getting back to work and, and talked about some of the things that, that worked with us uh, or for us last year, teaching the new guys some of the things and you know the, the three of us just being on the same page with all that stuff has been uh, a fun thing to be a part of to start this season. Next, let's go to Brad Turner. Hello, Frank. What's up, Brad? Hey, how much more do you rely on the medical staff and the trainers this season as compared to previous seasons, considering how the season is going so far? You know, we always rely on them, especially this time of year, but, but probably more now uh, because of, uh, you know, the, the, the situation we're in with the shorter off season, uh, COVID uh, protocols uh, disallowing us from, from playing to play, pick up games. So, you know, there's a uh, very detailed and, and regular conversations about how each of our guys are doing, uh, the pace with which we're building them up to, to live activity, you know, so, uh, you know, I would say probably more, but we always rely on them, you know, for this type of thing. All right, Melissa Rowland, please. Hey, Frank, uh, considering you're not playing in a bubble and the numbers uh, around COVID are spiking right now, I'm wondering how much pressure does that put on not only, you know, monitoring yourself and what you choose to do, but also your wife and your kids and making sure that they stay safe and making the right choices. Like what kind of pressure does that put on families? Well, it, it does. It, it uh, you know, they understand the, the importance. Um, you know, myself, all of our players, everyone that's participating here, you know, has to have the mindset to be extra careful with with the things we choose to do away from uh, our building. You know, the more the more time we can just spend at home and here, the better, and uh, minimize the other things that, that you have to do. Obviously, you know, people are still living lives. You know, uh, but we're trying to just stay as safe as possible and. You know, I think that applies to the to the families as well. I know my my wife and my daughters are are mindful of um, you know minimizing you know the the situations they put themselves in and uh, trying to be as risk free as possible. You know, they they don't want to uh, put me in position to 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 miss games. You know, uh, and at the same time, you know, I want them to to stay safe, uh, but to to still try to carry on uh, as much of a, lo a normal life as you can. Uh, while staying risk-free. Okay, we have time for two more. Let's go to Mike Bresnahan. Mike, you're late. There you go. Hey, Frank. Uh, Preseason is going to be so much different this year as opposed to pretty much every other year you've coached in the league. What do you want to get from these, these four games here, and how much will they go towards determining who starts an opening night and who's higher up in the rotation off the bench and that sort of thing? They'll, they'll play a role. I mean, you know, I, I always like to, you know, see the, the combinations of players uh, play out in preseason before we commit to lineups and, and whatnot. Um, you know, those games will play a factor. But I really don't look at it, you know, with this year's team as, you know, certain guys have to win a job or, or anything like that. Like, we have, we have good, uh, good players that have a proven track record of what they're able to do on, on the floor. And um, it's really going to be about – you know, how I feel like uh, we can pair certain lineups, certain guys up, uh, certain combinations uh, to win as many games as we can. So, uh, you know, the preseason games will be, a, will be a factor in that. But I've got a good feel for, uh, you know, for how our guys uh, or what our guys are capable of. Okay, last question. Let's go to Alan Sleeman. 
Hey, Coach, um, just get your thoughts as, as you, you know, obviously see what the lineup is, see how much talent on this team. Do, do you ever do you start looking down the road saying two, three months from right now or from now with just what that potential can be, what some of those rotations could be? Are, are you spending time thinking about down the road or are you just primarily focused on just kind of getting a day-to-day of where we are? Yeah, I, I really uh, have been in the moment. You know, uh, you know, as, as you're asking me this today, I, my mindset is really on, you know, or, you know, how can we manage today's practice, you know, to be enough to get them ready for games without overdoing it and making them vulnerable to injury. And, um, you know, so uh, my mind has really been on that and, uh, and then teaching our system to the new guys uh, and reminding our, our, our returning guys of the habits that won for us last year. And I um, haven't really thought too far ahead about what we're going to look like you know, two, three months into the season or, or going into the playoffs. You know, I just want to manage the marathon.